What's up, yo? Big Cat 305 here tonight. We're cooking fresh Florida lobster on the Blackstone. Let's do it. Let's prep our lobster tail. So first thing I like to do is cut this right down the middle on the top. Uh, it's a hard shell. You're gonna need some good kitchen shears. I got this bad boy at a local um, seafood restaurant slash market, Adrian's in Hylia Gardens. And this bad boy is about two pounds, I'd say two to two and a half pounds. It was one of the smallest ones they had. They have some gigantic lobster tails, but it's just for me, so I figure two pounds is plenty. So you wanna cut it down, uh, open it up gently. You don't wanna rip it wide open, and then you wanna use your fingers to kinda separate the meat from the shell. And the goal here is to open up the shell enough and to get that uh, tail loose enough to be able to pull it out, but not all the way. You wanna leave that bottom part uncut and Rip that bottom piece just a little bit more, as you can see, and then we're gonna pull that tail out, close the shell back up, and we're gonna lay the tail meat right back on top of the shell. The shell is gonna almost act like a bowl, or a pot in this case, a cooking pot for our lobster. And you can see there's a lot of lobster meat on there, which is gonna be incredible, because lobster is muy delicioso the next step we're going to add some olive oil to the outside of the lobster and we're just going to rub it down you can see i'm wearing gloves this thing gets pretty slimy, so you don't really want to be touching with your hands too much. You don't want to contaminate the lobster, and you know, it just looks nicer. So rub it up with some olive oil, get it all nice and rubbed on the outside. I'll lift the tail here so you can kind of see how much meat's on there. And get it nice and coated. Once it's nice and coated, we're gonna add paprika and we're gonna add it liberally you want to put a nice thick coat of paprika um, you'll see a lot of this goes away after we cook it because we do a lot of steaming so this is more for color um, a little bit of flavor you can use smoked paprika if you want I just use regular paprika um, but it looks really nice for the presentation purposes along with being on top of the tail uh, when you serve it And then finally, our garlic lime butter that we're gonna add right at the end when the lobster's 95% done. We're just gonna coat the top of it with this, this butter. You wanna use real butter, uh, minced garlic, and some lime juice. I give it a couple squirts. I'll put all the, uh, the amounts in the, the listing below. Uh, but you wanna mix this up real good. You want, you want the butter to be at room temperature before you even attempt to start this because if not, you will have a real hard time. So room temperature butter, uh, lime juice, and minced garlic. For the ingredients, we have our prepared lobster tail. We have our prepared garlic lime butter. We've got um, some asparagus that we cut the tips off on the end there, make it nice and fresh. And we've got some Olivio um, butter or butter substitute, um, a medium diced onion and some sliced or diced up potatoes. So you wanna get the Blackstone on a medium low heat, I'd say. We're gonna start with the potatoes. We're gonna put down some oil and get our blackstone griddle nice and lubed up. Um, like I said, about three, 
to four medium potatoes diced little tip here dice them small because if you dice them more uh, like a bigger chunks they're gonna take a lot longer to cook so I learned from my previous cooks uh, to dice them a little bit smaller this time as you can see and all I did was I put some olive oil before uh, with some paprika on top and mixed it all up nice and good along with some garlic as well and then I waited till I put them on the, the actual black stone to add the salt and fresh ground pepper and that's it you get them on there uh, get them nice and spiced up with the salt and pepper and just get them ready to go so these are going to take about roughly eight minutes or so to cook you want to stir them up real good get them all mixed up with the salt and pepper as well as the other seasonings um, and then we're going to steam them basically let them cook for a few minutes check on them uh, flip them up again or mix them up again steam them again and just repeat that process and then with the last couple two to three minutes we'll add our onions because that only those only take two to three minutes to get translucent and nice and done so here we go some water and we put our grill down on top about two to three minutes have gone by I'm gonna check on them stir them up get them all mixed up uh, we don't want them burning on the bottom so that's the main reason for doing this is just to cook them evenly check on them right there they're not even close so we, we need at least another three to four minutes before we put our onions on uh, so we put them back in our little pile here and we're gonna add some more water here and again cover them to steam we'll check them in another three to four minutes so now we check them and I see here they're getting a little stuck to the bottom so they're definitely getting done you can, you can see them starting to get crispier uh, you see some dark browns in there that's that's your cue okay these are almost done here um, again flip them around mix them up here's where we add our onions that's it we're at the two, two to three minute mark um, add our onions and again we're gonna mix these up mix them in at this point we're not gonna cover them we're just going to add a little bit more oil and we're gonna stir them up and we're going to spread them out once we get them stirred up the goal here is to get the onions on the flat top uh, with the potatoes you see me scraping a little bit of uh, some potatoes that got stuck there because obviously they're getting done and crispy which is great that's what we want so now we just got to have the the onions catch up it does not take long like I said so that's it spread them up spread them around no clumps try to get them nice and even and let them cook for a few minutes Get them back in a nice little pile, but not too piled up so the onions are hitting the surface. So here I decide to add a little bit of butter, uh, number one, just to keep them nice and moist, and number two, for some more flavor does not hurt butter is our friend <laughs> not for our heart but for the taste buds yes it is definitely uh, good to go so a little bit of butter mix it up not too much you can see it wasn't much um, and that's it just mix them up spread them out again keep mixing keep having fun with the blackstone this is the fun part here Can 
try to keep it nice and organized. So here I am going to give it a little taste. And after the taste, they are perfect. If you put them all together at the same time, you're going to have mushy, soggy onions. If you put the onions down too quick, they get mushy. You want them nice and crisp, kind of just like the potatoes. You don't want mushy potatoes either. So you can see here, they're nice and crispy on the outside. The onions are done perfectly, and we take them off. A little more oil and then we put our asparagus down. So you want to spread them out and again try to get them all to be touching the surface of the blackstone. The asparagus is only going to take three or four minutes I would say. Uh, it doesn't take that long. We're not going to cover these or steam them. We do not want them soggy. We want them crispy on the outside and nice and done on the inside. So we add some butter. We add some salt. We add some pepper. And let them cook. And let them mix them around a little bit so they all get a little bit of butter. And that spices get mixed around a little bit. And we want, again, we want to make sure that the the exterior of each asparagus is touching the blackstone if not it's not going to get cooked so we want them lined up like little soldiers right in a row these are little crooked soldiers but <laughs> they're soldiers nonetheless and uh, we'll get them cooked up nice and straight So it's been a few minutes and they are looking good. You can see the color coming out. I love it when the asparagus cooks, it turns like a brighter green. Time to flip them. I attempted to do it with the spatulas, but did not work. <laughs> so I decided to just, you know what? <laughs> That's why they make tongs. Flip them with the tongs and you can see I'm even struggling with those. So whatever use whatever works best for you but again you can see the the the, the darker marks on the uh, the parts that were down that's the whole reason why we flip them and again we want to coat them up uh, or get them get them cooked evenly on both sides nice and uh, straight soldiers there they're getting straighter they're looking good they're looking real good actually I love asparagus those uh, that's one of my favorite vegetables and asparagus goes great with lobster, which is coming up next. All right, asparagus is done. Time to get them off, put them on the plate, and they look delicious. I could eat asparagus just by itself. They are great. Time for the main event. It is big fat lobster time. Look at that sucker. It is huge. So as I said previously, the shell is going to act like the pot or pan, if you will, for this lobster tail. And we add some butter which is going to steam up with the water and then you want to cover it I tried with the grill dome it's too big so I got some heavy duty tin foil but as you can see I'm still struggling with this thing it is so tall it's just hard to get all the ends down at the same time <laughs> um, I was gonna edit this out but I said you know what you guys need to see this because this is reality here so 
Water down again. Let's try this one more time. Let's see. Yeah, that's a little bit better there. And we're going to let this steam up. So after about four minutes, we're going to check it and see where it's at. We have it on relatively low heat. I do not want to overcook this and it's not even close. So I just put the lid back down and try to get it flat again. And a lot of you might be saying, why don't you just cover the lid? Well, the lid is is great, uh, but it's it's got a lot of vents and holes. So it's not really going to steam the same way the grill dome would or even tin foil if it's pretty flat on the surface area. It's the whole purpose of steaming is not to let too much get out. Um, so in this case, we want to have a pretty good steam because that's a big lobster tail. Okay, we got smart here. We took a big pan, a round pan, and we covered it with tin foil and then used the pan as a mold to make the tin full mold and it works and you can see the lobster is done it probably took about 10 to 12 minutes to cook this lobster which is a long time but it's a big lobster so you can tell when it's done it starts getting white on the outside uh, the translucent part goes away and now it's time to add our garlic lime butter and you can just see it coming melting and getting in there and wow it just looks absolutely incredible that is it this big fat lobster is done look at the garlic butter melted look at it just bubbling in its own juices there that is an amazing sight right there we are going to dig into this lobster and with our potatoes and our asparagus and wow i cannot wait let's go check it out Look at the size of this big fat lobster. Here's my hand, and I'm a big dude. That's a big lobster. And we got some potatoes and onions and some asparagus, all cooked up on the Blackstone with some melted butter and a nice cold beer. I'm about to dig in. Come on and zoom in again on this one more time, because this thing is like, are you freaking kidding me look at this wow this thing is a beast i mean come on <laughs> you serve this up at dinner time and you are gonna be the hero look at that wow all right i gotta eat everybody thank you again for watching commenting liking subscribing uh, we're growing real fast here. I appreciate all the support and we'll keep on cooking. Big Cat, out.